How are you guys doing today? Good. Yeah, good. I got some helpers here. What's your guys' names? Jasper and Oscar. Yeah, can you guys say hi? We're going to do some... Say hi. Go ahead. Hi. Tell them we're going to do some substitution. We're going to do some substitution. And it's... Tell them, tell them it's called you substitution. You substitution. Okay, that was my boys. Um... So I think the notation on this stuff can get kind of confusing, and it's actually a pretty easy process. So I think the easiest way to do this is to just kind of work through some examples, and then uh, at the end of the examples, I'll kind of show you what the notation is saying. The first couple problems here, 9 to 12, uh, they, they say just to do it by trial and error, and I do think it's worth it because uh, so that you can kind of see the reason that you need to do this. And so they're asking for the antiderivative of these problems. And so I'm just going to go do number 10. Um, and so, you know, the antiderivative of e to the, uh, e to the 3x plus 1. And you may think like, well, okay, so... Um, you know, the derivative of e to the x is e to the x, so then the antiderivative of e to the x is e to the x. So maybe the um, antiderivative of, I'm going to write it this way. So you may say, okay, so maybe the antiderivative of this is just e to the 3x plus 1. And so then we should check to see how we go about um, checking it by taking the derivative. And if you remember correctly, on the derivative of something like this, we said, uh, well, we actually need to do the chain rule. And we would say, okay, the derivative would be u, right? So we would say that u is 3x plus 1. And then we would do some other things, and, uh, you know, and, and right, we would write it all out. But basically what we would be doing is the derivative of the big thing times the derivative of the little thing, or the inner thing, the inner and the outer. So it would end up being e to the 3x plus 1 times the derivative of u over here, which would be 3. And so this would be the derivative... of e to the 3x plus 1. But, of course, this isn't what we started with. So, you know, this, we can't say that the antiderivative of this is this because clearly when we took the derivative, we didn't get the same thing. And so, but we're really close. And so then what we could say is like, well, if we could just divide by that 3, um, then we would have what we need. So instead of, right, really what we wanted was that it was one-third e to the 3x plus 1. And so that's kind of like doing it by trial and error. And I do suggest that you guys do those two problems now before you go any further with the video. So take, take a look at 9 and 11, work them out. You know, you're, you're going to have this situation where... You know, maybe you'll see it right away. I don't know. Um, but, you know, maybe you'll have to go back to adjust to make sure that everything works out. So take a look at those two problems and then watch the rest. Okay, so I hope you guys did those problems. And uh, I'm actually going to skip 13 and through 16 there because they did the, the substitution already for you. But uh, so, like, the first step that I'm going to show you is already done on those. Uh, definitely take a look at them, but I'm going to just kind of start with the, the whole idea here. So, you know, we have this fairly complicated uh, uh, problem here. And what we're just going to do is look for kind of the inner function. And, you know, this is directly related. Well, not directly, maybe not directly related, but very related to the chain rule. The, the idea is very, very similar. Um, and so we're going to take the problem one here, which I would say is x squared. That's kind of the way I'm looking at it. But, um, so, you know, I kind of look at it as like where the problem function is, and it's definitely the x squared here. So 
What I'm going to say is that we're going to substitute x squared with u. All right. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say we're going to take the derivative of both sides with respect to our variable in the problem, so with respect to x. So du dx, so remember that's um, taking the derivative of u with respect to x, uh, kind of like that implicit differentiation. And we're going to say that's equal to 2x. And we're trying to substitute stuff in here, so I'm going to kind of multiply dx to the other side. And so what we're saying is, is du equals 2x dx. And if you look at the problem, we have an x already along with our dx. So we can almost substitute this directly with du. Uh, our problem right here is the 2. So what I like to do here is kind of divide by 2. And so then what we're saying is, is that x dx is the same as du over 2. And so now we're going to substitute this straight in. And we're going to say, well, then we have the integral now of e to the u times du over 2. Okay, and so maybe uh, it'll look a little bit more reasonable if we write it maybe, you know, either 1 half e to the u du. Oops. Sorry, I said 1 half. Um, or even if you like uh, e to the u over 2. Right, a any way you want to write it. But now all we're going to do is uh, do the integral. Right, if you like to take out the one half, you can even do that. And so then the antiderivative of e to the u is e to the u, so now we have this one half times e to the u plus c. And of course, we didn't start with u, and so we got to come back to our original substitution here and plug that back in. So then what we're saying is that it's e to the x squared over 2 plus c. Okay, so I'm going to just do a couple more of these examples, and I think you'll probably uh, get the idea. Uh, then, we'll, then we'll do like uh, the uh, problem from that next section. Uh, so I'll do maybe four or five more examples for you, and uh, maybe another one of the, uh, definitely a couple definite integrals, so maybe like six more examples, and then we'll talk about the notation, and uh, then I think you guys would be good. So, you know, again, fairly obnoxious. We got kind of like an inner uh, function, which I would say is the dx minus 3, and the outer function, 1 over whatever it is. So let's say that our u, this is our u substitution move, is the 10x minus 3. And then I like to work all these out like I did in that last problem. So when we take the derivative of both sides with respect to x, we get du dx. And then the derivative of the right-hand side would just be 10. And then what we would say is Oops, du equals 10 dx, okay? And, you know, you don't have to do this move, but I think it, it makes sense to do. You know, you just got to account for this 10 somewhere. So I think it's easy to say, well, dx is the same as du over 10. And now you have all your information in there that, that we're going to need. And we'll just substitute it right in. So really we're going to look at the antiderivative of 1 over u. And then we have this 10 running around. So don't, don't forget about it, but it's kind of a constant. Well, it's not kind of a constant. It is a constant right now. Okay? So 
the antiderivative of 1 over u is going to be the natural log of u. So we got one tenth of the natural log of u plus c. And then we're going to substitute uh, our original back in. So we would have one tenth the natural log of 10x minus 3 plus c. Okay, one more here. Uh, I think one more should be good enough. We will, uh, so our, uh, you know, the kind of like the problem function that I'm looking at there is sine to the tenth. So what I think is going to be the easiest move for us is to say, well, u is going to be sine. And now I, I have a little experience on this. Um, and so if you, you're not sure, you know, you may not, you may not pick the right substitution right away, but the way I'm looking at this is I know our next move is going to be to take the derivative of both sides, and I know the derivative of sine is cosine, except, oops, except that we need... negative cosine, uh, sorry I got mixed up there, not negative cosine, right, the derivative of, derivative of sine is just cosine, um, and so then du equals uh, cosine of theta d theta, I got sloppy there with my um, notation, right, we're at theta here, right, so you know, again, I, I chose sine instead of sine to the tenth um, because the derivative of sine is much easier to deal with than the derivative of sine to the tenth. And uh, maybe even more importantly, I knew the derivative of sine was cosine, and I see that that's going to be something that we got to substitute in too. So now we have a nice clean substitution on this one, and we have u to the tenth du. So now it's really easy. The antiderivative of u to the tenth is u to the eleventh over eleven plus c. Okay, and then we're going to substitute uh, back in. So we really we're saying that sine to the eleventh over eleven plus c would be our antiderivative. I'll get it right here in a second. There. Okay, so sometimes, uh, you know, the antiderivative is easy to find, like we were doing uh, in those first ones with u substitution. Uh, sometimes they are a little bit more work, and then sometimes you can't even do it at all. Um, but I, I do want to suggest that you want to play around a lot with your substitution, and you know, sometimes you'll choose an easier one than others. Um, and so just keep in mind that there isn't only one substitution that will work. There may be an easier one, though. So, you know, I'm looking at this. You know, the real problem looks down in the denominator. So let's try to substitute m for y plus 1. And let's just see what happens here. So if that's what we're doing, then we're going to say that the derivative of both sides would be this. And that means du is the same as dy. And so then when we come over here and substitute it back in, right, what you're noticing is that we didn't really get everything substituted away. And so that's a problem, and you, you can't go through any further right now because we have these two different variables. But we have made a statement over here 
using U and Y. And so there's no reason we can't manipulate this to get rid of our Y over here. And so what I mean by that is if U equals Y plus 1, then Y equals U minus 1. And so now we can come back over here and say, well, really then this is u minus 1 squared over u to the fourth du. And now we have both variables and we can use some of our integration techniques to simplify this down. So then this is the same as, uh, be careful guys, u squared minus 2u plus 1 over u to the fourth du. Right, and then right, you remember how to substitute these through, or uh, break these apart, sorry. They're playing a game over there. They're getting angry. So then really this would be the same as 1 minus u squared du minus the integral of uh, 2 over u cubed du and plus the integral of 1 over u to the fourth du. Um, and so this one is uh, somewhat obnoxious, and so maybe my substitution wasn't quite as good as it could be, but I think we can still get there this way. So, right, let's go through this. Right, remember... Those of you that need to remember, this is equivalent. And I think this will make it easier. I don't know about you. Okay, and so now we can just take the integrals of all of these, or the antiderivatives of all of these. So then we have u to the negative first over negative 1 minus 2 u to the negative second over negative 1 oh, sorry, over negative uh, 2 plus u to the negative third over negative 3 plus c So to simplify this up a little bit cleaner, right, I got 1 over u, negative 1 over u, uh, plus 1 over u squared, uh, minus 1 over 3u cubed. Yeah, I think I'm doing this right anyway. Um, and so then remember what we substituted in originally was, or substituted out originally, was y plus 1. We got negative 1 over y plus 1 plus 1 over y plus 1 squared minus 1 over 3y plus 1 to the third plus c. And I'm sure you can simplify that down a little bit further if you'd like. But um, I think uh, you get the point of what you may have to do. And so if I go back up here, you know... Again, I don't know that that was the most efficient way. It's just the way that looked like it was going to work. But you can manipulate these things to get rid of other variables. You know, just because you've made a substitution somewhere doesn't mean that it automatically takes care of everything like it did on the first section. So you can yeah, deal with this. You know, other options include, you know, you could say that, you know, maybe it would make sense to say that u equals maybe just uh, y. Um, and then you could square u, so then u squared would be y squared, and so then maybe you could substitute some things in that way, and maybe that would have been an easier way to do it, I'm not sure. Um, but definitely play around with some different ideas. You know, you can, 
Um, also go in the other direction that I said. Maybe you want to say that u is y squared. Uh, and I don't think that makes sense in this problem, but you know, maybe in a, few, uh, in a different problem that would make sense to say that u equals y squared and then the square root of u equals y. You, know, you can do any of those kinds of things while you're trying this stuff out. Okay, so I'm skipping over the trig ones. You know, you gotta, you just gotta memorize the antiderivatives of those uh, specific trig functions. You know, sine and cosine are straightforward, but then the other ones are not as straightforward. So you just gotta memorize them, and then you just treat them the same way as the uh, the other problems that you did. But you can use this uh, the substitution rule with definite integrals as well. There's just a one little thing that you got to pay attention to, but you know, we're going to do uh, this first one here. We're going to substitute in just the same way. We're going to take this inner one, this x squared plus one. We're going to say that's u. Then we're going to find du dx, and that would be 2x, and you notice this is working out pretty, pretty straightforward. So then du is the same as 2x dx, right? We have a nice little substitution going on here. Um, and so when we resubstitute this back, we would have u squared, so du over u squared, right? Because the 2x and the dx became du and our inner became squared. Now, the only thing that's different now is since we are evaluating at a different variable, that means that we're also needing to evaluate at different endpoints. Okay, so the way you deal with that is you take your original endpoints and come over here into what you said the u substitution was and reevaluate it. So then that means that our uh, lower endpoint would be. 0 squared plus 1, so just 1. And then our upper one would be 2 squared plus 1, so 5. Okay, so you do have to make that move if you're substituting something in. And, you know, in that previous section where they were doing all that substitution and changing the, um, changing our interval, this was kind of what it was leading to. So now... Uh, we're just going to treat it the, uh, just like it was an, uh, an, indef uh, an indefinite, I'm sorry, a definite integral. So I'm going to again change this to u to the negative second du. I'm going to find the antiderivative of u to the negative second, and that would be um, u to the negative first over negative one. And we're going to evaluate that from 5 to 1. Yeah, what's up, buddy? Um, <laughs> I'll tell you what the question was if you want to know, but not on the Internet. All right, so, uh, you know, this is going to be the same as negative 1 over u evaluated 5 to 1. And so then, again, we're saying that negative 1 over 5... Uh, minus negative 1 over 1, and we're going to do, let's see, was that negative 1 fifth plus 5 over 5, and we're going to get 4 fifths. Okay, so again, nothing is different on these definite integrals, uh, for the most part anyway, than it was for the indefinite integrals. Uh, with the exception that you do have to remember that when you change, right, since we are changing uh, our variable here, that's going to also affect our um, places that we're uh, evaluating it at. Okay, so you got to remember these steps right there. And if you noticed, 
right? We didn't, I guess, you know, the, the other difference is, is we didn't have to come back and resubstitute it in like we were on the indefinite integrals. You know, that, and the reason for that is because we changed it here. So the last example I'm going to do for you for right now is going to deal with either sine squared or cosine squared. And to deal with these, we have to use these half angle formulas. And, the, you know, I found these at the uh, beginning of the book. Uh, remember that the page that just has all your trig identities and stuff laid out for you. So we actually have to use these um, to deal with this. So I'm going to go ahead and change sine squared into this. Okay, and then we're going to manipulate this around a little bit. And what I mean by that is we're going to change it to uh, the integral of 1 half minus, um, oops, sorry, uh, dx minus the integral of negative Sorry again, uh, cosine of 2x over 2, right? We just uh, split those apart. <clears throat> okay, and I'm going to um, mess with the second one just a little bit more here. Uh, okay, maybe I'll do both of them. Maybe that will be easier so you can see kind of like what you're allowed to do here. So, you know, we have one half the integral of dx, and then this is right minus one half the integral of cosine 2x dx. And I'm actually going to take a one half all the way out of everything because, uh, you know, I think that it's going to be a little bit easier. Okay, and now we're just going to take the antiderivative of each of these. Don't forget about the one half there. You know, you don't have to do it that way either. You can leave the one half in. And right, so then the antiderivative of one is just x. And then minus, right, I'm going to do a little u substitution here make this a little bit easier. So we're going to say that u equals 2x, and that means du dx equals 2. So then du equals 2. dx, and finally we'll just leave it as dx equals du over 2. So then we're really finding here um, cosine of u du over 2. And so the antiderivative of cosine would be sine. plus C. And so then finally we could have one half X minus one fourth sine of two X. Don't forget to substitute it back in. Plus C. Okay, so 
you know, just another thing that you got to keep in mind that uh, sine squared, cosine squared, you can't really just substitute in U for those. You got to go through this half angle uh, formula or half angle identity and, um, and proceed the way that I just showed you there. So hopefully that uh, helps you out quite a bit. Uh, and, you know, I guess I said at the beginning that we would take a look at the notation real quick. And we can find that on page 402. So here we go with the notation. And, you know, I think the way to look at this is this part was when we took the derivative of our u, right? We substituted u in for this inner function, right? When we went off to the side, we said, oh, u equals this pain in the butt part. And then this part got consumed by the fact that while we were doing u substitution on the side, we had to take the derivative and then manipulate it to find dx. Okay, and so that's kind of what they're saying here. And, uh, you know, I think now that you've seen the procedure a couple times, if you read through this, it'll make sense. And the disclaimer down here, not all integrals yield to the substitution rule. You guys want to say bye? You guys did a good job. Bye. Say, say, bye. Say good job, guys. Good job, guys. Good job, guys. Where are they? Where are they? Mm -hmm. Oh, they can't see you right now. You guys want to see them sometime? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, it's not fair that they get to hear your voice, but you don't get to hear theirs, huh? Can you tell them what you guys are doing? Playing. And is it, are we on our snow day? Mm-hmm. All right. All right, so uh, take a look at that. There might be uh, more examples to come, but I think that gets you guys as far as we need to get. So, um, you know, I guess if, if there's something serious that you guys have a question with, um, you know, shoot me off an email. Uh, I think you guys can probably bust through these problems pretty easy, though. Talk to you soon. Come on.